Are you an everyday nerd? Hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next episode. Yo, welcome back to Your Everyday Nerd. I'm your host, Zach Snyder. If you're new around here on Yen, we pull from every corner of nerd culture to talk about anything and everything that piques my interest. If you've seen the last few episodes of the show, you'll know that we're currently in the midst of our Best Picture nominee marathon, where I take a look at all the films nominated for Best Picture in the current year, and then review them, and then rank them at the end, and put Joker on the bottom. Spoiler alert. But due to unfortunate circumstances, we're gonna blame it on the coronavirus quarantine. I um I haven't finished this yet. Instead, I have, uh, let's see, I started a Let's Play channel in current year. I watched seasons one through six of Community. I beat Gradius on the NES. I beat Sonic Forces, that was that was a trip. Started watching Naruto. Yeah, I did that. Uh, spent my stimulus money on a brand new bed. I was sleeping on a futon for the last two years and uh, just played a measly 250 hours of Animal Crossing New Horizons on my Nintendo Switch. So as you can see, I've not been busy at all, uh, but we're back to talk about the next Best Picture nominee, the Grandpa Car movie featuring Batman and Jason Bourne, Batman vs. Ferrari, Dawn of Justice. How long we've known each other, Ken? I ever break a promise to you? If you don't know anything about it, 2019's Ford v Ferrari is an action drama film directed by James Mangold and starring Matt Damon and Christian Bell. This film with the European title Le Mans 66 follows the true story about the 1966 24 hours of Le Mans race in France where the car company Ford made history with its GT40 when they finally made a faster car than Ferrari under the direction of Carroll Shelby and Ken Miles. Ford v Ferrari was also nominated for Best Film Editing, Best Sound Editing, and Best Sound Mixing. Now I'm going to be completely honest here, I didn't love this film. I thought it was good. I did enjoy it, even after a rewatch, but I didn't fall in love with it like so many people did. And so there are going to be some issues that I have with it. And most of those issues lie in Ford vs Ferrari's story. The plot is extremely predictable. When we're dealing with a film that's based off of a real life event, there's not much here that's gonna surprise you. It's a very cut and dry, three act story structure film with not many surprises. Is that a bad thing? Not necessarily. Is it a best picture worthy film? Eh. What I can say about the story is while it is predictable, it's not not entertaining. Both Christian Bell and Matt Damon do a great job in their respective roles. I really enjoyed their long, complicated relationship and seeing how the events in this film affect their friendship. It's very rewarding in its own way. I love the themes of passion and doing what you love to do, even if it kills you. They touch on this with Shelby's character and even with Henry Ford II's character and how he kind of falls in the shadow of his own father. But it's the character of Ken Miles that really works here. He strives to be great on the racetrack and even though he wins every race he's in, it's his temper that always gets the best of him. It's definitely a very interesting character trait and seeing him grow throughout the film into more of a team player, it's very nice. I think with these themes, that's why this should be a family film. Cause like, it, it basically is in its tone and its message, but then you can't really play it around children cause it has a lot of profanity. And that's a little bit unfortunate in my opinion. Either way, it's the script that has the only real weak point to me. The visual and sound presentation here is where the strengths of Ford v Ferrari really come into play. The cinematography during any of the racing sequences are outright beautiful. The lighting, the camera angles, the color grading, it really distinguishes these racing scenes from any other movie that has to do with racing. The sound design, that is pure gold. I watched this twice, once at home on the TV and once in theaters, and listening to all the sound mixing in the theaters was a pretty great experience. I also watched this 14 minute video from Vanity Fair about the sound editors for this film, and it's amazing the lengths they went to make this as realistic as possible. They actually took a real life GT40 and used a ton of mics to record all the car sounds that they used. An inferior film would have just used any old car and grabbed sounds for it, so I do really appreciate this extra step towards realism. 
While I'm not the biggest fan of the soundtrack, I don't think it's anything like super special in terms of enjoyment. There are some really cool moments in the score where the music harmonizes with the sounds of the engines and that's just dope. Again, this attention to detail is something you really can't deny is super impressive. So, 4v Ferrari is a good movie. I was a bit surprised that I'd even enjoy it at all because I'm not really a car guy. About the extent of getting into cars for me was Hot Wheels. But what we have here is a fairly entertaining film. Even though you know exactly where it's going to go based off the trailer, you at least get some really beautiful shots. And again, where this really shines is in the sound editing room. It does make it hard for me to consider this best picture worthy though. When I think best picture, I think it should be more of a masterpiece. Of course, that's not what the Academy thinks. I know that, but this is what I think it should mean. And so while I think this is a good movie, I don't think it's a great movie. It's just missing that extra spark for me to make it best picture. But that's all the time we have for today. If you liked the video, go hit that like button. If for a reason you didn't like it, you can hit that dislike button. Let me know down in the comments. What are your thoughts on Ford versus Ferrari? Did you like it? Did you think it deserved best picture? Let me know, I'm curious. Also, we're like 100 subscribers away from 1,000 and that is a gigantic milestone. So if you liked today's episode and you're interested in more nerd related content, please think about hitting that subscribe button. It would mean a lot to me. In the meantime, thank you again so much for watching. I will see you next time on Your Everyday Nerd. Goodbye.